Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. That's right. This is Air Windows Stonefire. Just last week, I got asked if I could take the thing that I had in Kalman and combine it with what I have in Air 3 to do just the EQ section of what I'm hoping to put into Console X. Well, I haven't actually got a version of Console X ready to put out yet. I've been busy doing a whole bunch of things, but turns out I was able to give you this thing, and let's hear it now. Here is my rock and roll track, as always. Here is Stonefire. Here, less, or more. This alone, I'll call Fire, you less, Cast aside or more. A lifetime's vicious lie. Stone, less, Everything's or more. There you have it. This is not exactly a equalizer as we traditionally know it. And I'll show you why. You will understand that air is mostly like super high frequencies. Fire is mostly like mid-range. Stone is mostly like bass. But there's a reason I'm not calling it, oh hey, treble, mid-range, and bass, because they don't entirely work that way. And when you push the crossover extensively, like let's bounce over to something else. Here's Alien Kittens. People have heard this from me a lot of times. So with all of these, if we cut them back completely, you have no sound. Also, these are nicely smoothed controls. Now let's bring in those low frequencies. And you notice this is not just low frequencies. There's low frequencies, yes, and the range control determines where it crosses over, but... But it's going to act kind of different. Because it's not simply a filter. It's something that's a little more complicated using techniques that come from, say, GPS positioning in science. It's Kalman filters all the way down. From the very highest highs to the very lowest lows, these are not normal musical filters. As such, if you use it to try to isolate frequencies, that's not really going to work very well. But if you use it to shape the textures of the tracks you're working on, that might work a whole lot better. We can play with Alien Kittens here and see that we can set range to be low. and have a sort of sputtery behavior. We can use just mid-range using uh, the fire control. And we've you, you might think that you hear high frequencies, but this is really high frequencies. Because air is also in there. When you hear just the fire control, you're hearing mid-range minus the top control, air, and also minus the bottom control, stone. And it's a way of, for instance, cutting back the lows in a certain way, but Of course, we can also boost extreme highs this way, or cut them back quite sharply. Uh, cutting back the air control all the way is a little more effective than trying to cut lows out, cutting back uh, stone all the way. It's a little, it'll fool you a little bit better that it's a smooth musical filter type behavior rather than a, a strange, I dare I say it, AI, except for it's not really AI, but it is a Kalman filter. So it's not really thinking in musical terms. It's thinking in terms of synthesizing a waveform that it thinks is the correct information underneath what you're working with.
so we can give it some of the air back. And then if we give it some of the stone back, it starts sounding a whole lot more like the original sound, except for when we turn it off, the original sound is this. So we've just done some pretty radical things to the mix. And we can dial back how much of them we want to do. We can go back to a more rock style track and play with that again. I'm going to double click on these Reaper sliders. And then if I'm trying to build this mix, from just raw appearances, maybe I want to isolate the lows by cutting the range all the way down to nothing. You do still have the same range on Kalman is here. And as such, we can bring up that thump. until we have a sort of spotlit effect on that uh, kick drum. And then let's put the mid-range right back again. Everything's returning and the highs right back again. And then if we only had the highs and the lows, we'd have some sparkle, certainly. We can heighten that a little bit and only that lows, and then bring fire back in. Until we're kind of highlighting what's happening. And we're also hearing a hand clap that wasn't as obvious before. But as long as we're talking about working with these drums, we could, in fact, go to the raw drum track because similarly to a bunch of other tracks I did the year that this one was recorded, um, a bunch of this was designed to act kind of like drum and bass breaks and was intentionally recorded slow so that I could have the tempo and the voices of all the drums scaled up. The original sample, if you have a lot of Air Windows knowledge, and have been following my stuff for a long time, you can get a hold of this yourself. But the original sample is more like this. And so what we can do is play with this. Here is unedited. And then if we look at only that low frequency, we can turn up that kick like this. And this is the thing that I've talked about, where if you have this control, Stonefire, just on an individual track, you can kind of isolate stuff. And it's acting a little bit like you had a sub kick on the actual kick drum, which is a pretty effective way of highlighting some of the sound out of the room sound. And we can bring some air in as well. Remember, these are all balanced just as sort of three sliders. And if they all match, you're flat. So the amount of boosting and cutting that you do on any particular thing is relative to each other. If they are all turned down to like 0.25, you've just attenuated everything without changing anything in the tone at all. Also, note the interesting interactions that we get here, because what we've got, I'm going to make this loop on the playback. Check this out. Here we have air turned down all the way, and also fire turned down all the way. As we sneak it up from literally zero, so that a tiny bit of it shows up again, There's like a node where it has the most cancellation. And then you can bring in this super high air. Or indeed make it dominate with super high air.
when that, that low is, that's going to change it relative to where air is. So moving anything is going to fuss with the balance of everything. Bring those symbols in. The air on air three and on stone fire is very sparkly. And then we're going to bring the mid-range back in. And we have a balance that sounds relatively normal, but it's doing these interesting things with the filtering, even though it's not really filtering. And if we push fire beyond this, we're getting a lot closer to what the raw track sounds like. Raw track sounds like this. And then we can kind of bring in a particular balance by changing these textures. Changing the textures so that the, the fiery mid-range can be pulled back quite a bit. Or even more. And make things like the snare drum be made mostly out of the air band and the stone band. And that's going to be a sort of mid-70s uh, wide range sound, that kind of balance. You can even push it to the point where it's almost like, you know, mid-70s Frank Zappa, just very, very hyped like this. Here I have it just sort of doing a little blip. It sounds gated because, again, this is not simply a filter. This is something a lot weirder. And you have it now. This is uh, Stonefire. This is the most recent plugin. I can bring range up. That is the crossover between fire and stone. Until we have a very punchy lows. make the highs even more exaggerated. And we've got this gate equality because range is letting you set up stone so that it's giving you a mid-range picture, but in such a way that it's not complete without the mid-band in here, fire in here. And then if I put that to literally between these other ones, That's a lot like the raw track, but then I can lean it over towards this much more striking effect and just kind of dial in how much of this quality I want. Or we can use this concept and go, here is the sound of basically the mid-range stuff. And maybe we're going to go for something that's sort of a lot more old school. And we want this particular drum track not to sound all glittery and hi-fi 70s, but instead to sound really rowdy and aggressive which could perhaps be done using the fire control and taking stone and air out. So we can use that to boost. And now we've got a very mid-rangey thing, which is not nearly as glittery. We can let it have some of the air back. I think we've got some extra boost in this in here. We'll pull it back even further. And we can pull stone back even further. And now we've changed the kick drum sound from that extra heaviness, uh, low frequency, isolated thing into something that sounds very, very roomy and where you're really getting a sense of the whack 
of the theater to the point where we're even kind of hearing the extra resonance around the drum. Because remember, working with this, it's not just a frequency cutoff. It is making a shape out of each step, each step of the way, meaning that you can use the shape positively, like using stone on the drum kit here, and having it sound like you're kind of highlighting the closeness of the kick drum, or if you subtract that by doing it and then pulling it out, making fire be much louder and setting it up so it's having a really striking strong effect. What you end up getting is the definition in the lows and the close effect of the lows is being taken away and you've got the uh, kick drum resonating because that's one of the things that's being taken out of the lows by the stone band. And you get this. From this. And there you have it. So I am going to uh, post this and get back to my work. I have been having a really interesting bunch of live streams lately. We've been working with the uh, framework Juice. Specifically, uh, a guy named Sudara, who's making an amazing synth that you're going to want to check out, is uh, doing a thing called Pample Juice, which is a approachable way of getting juice projects to build and work. And I started running with it and found that it was actually working for me. So I've been going with that ever since. And in recent weeks, we're doing things like designing knobs and stuff so that I can step forward and then you get to see what Chris from Air Windows would do if he was doing fancy GUI based stuff and all that, but my way. That's going to be interesting. All this work is supported by Patreon. I'm just going to say it because that's going fine, but I mean, the more I can do, the more I can do. And you don't have to join Patreon to have Stonefire because part of the reason I'm doing all of this, like I've actually been asked also to work on a compressor that gets sort of Dilla style sounds. And I think I've identified some of the things that cause that. So we're going to be working on that a little bit as well. But part of the reason I'm doing my stuff the way that I do it is I want these tools get to get into the hands of people who don't have like crap loads of money to throw around. I don't think there's a correlation between people being independently wealthy and being great musicians. Nor, because I'm like 55 years old, I've been in the music business or been aware of the music business for a while. And there's not a correlation between people getting paid by the music business and whether they're any good. That seems to be more along the lines of business sense and how much power they have. And I don't know if there's necessarily a correlation between people having lots of power and being able to make great music. But I do know that it's within my capacity to put out plugins and build stuff and make it available so that people can have it. And in fact, even use my source code, make their own plugins, learn to do this stuff too. Like I say, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. That's kind of why I'm doing it. I would indeed love for people to jump on the Patreon, throw lots of money. It's more exciting and uh, my life is less scary when I'm able to weather like sudden emergencies and things like that. But with or without that security, I know what I'm wanting to do with my life and I know what I'm doing it for. And that has led us to Stonefire this week. I've gone on kind of a long time because I was playing with it quite a bit. But hey, it doesn't have to be just me playing with it. You can download it and play with it too. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.